Hey, what's up, Blue Collar Business Owner? Welcome back to the Blue Collar Prosperity Podcast. I am your host, Paul Masco, where we focus on helping guide you to have a business that produces consistent, positive cash flow. In doing so, you'll have a financially healthy business and be able to achieve all of your personal goals you set out when you started your business, which will allow you to finally sleep well at night. Today is a solo show. It is my first solo show that we're gonna dive into something specific when it comes to numbers, KPIs, all the good things that drive results in your business. And if you don't know, we're gonna do this the first week of every month. So the first week of every month will be a solo show with me diving into finance, KPIs, all the drivers of cash flow. So that way you know how to have a more consistent, positive cash flowing business. So we're gonna start big picture with this episode and then future episodes, we're gonna dig into really the nitty nitty gritty of what's driving all of the things in your business to get the cash flow you're looking for. So a little bit about me. If you didn't listen to the intro episode, uh, I am Paul Maskell. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I've been down here since 2010, originally from the Midwest. Uh, grew up in Michigan, got a finance degree in Michigan, and then moved to Chicago. Sat in a cubicle for three years because everybody told me that's what you're supposed to do. And I realized that was not for me. This was from 2007 to 2010. So I watched a lot of people lose their job over those three years and realize this isn't as safe as everyone says it was. So I quit that job, moved down to North Carolina, been here ever since, have scaled and sold four different uh, businesses. Now, currently, I own and operate Blue Collar Business Advisors. We are an outsourced CFO firm. So what is an outsourced CFO firm? What does a CFO do? You might be wondering, I already got a bookkeeper, I already got a CPA. Bookkeepers and CPAs are great. We all need those too. They look backwards though. So they look at what you've done historically. They make sure you're complying with taxes, make sure your quarterly estimates are ready. They're putting things in buckets based on your chart of accounts. But very rarely do they help with forward strategy. If they do, that's great. Uh, but most of them don't. And they also aren't experts in your type of business. Most bookkeepers, most CPAs, they are serving all sorts of different type of business owners where as I, as a CFO, I only focus on blue collar businesses, the HVACs, the plumbings, the electricals, landscapings, windows and doors, tree companies, all the things uh, that I love working around for really the last, la last seven or eight years, I've been solely focused on the trades, was a partner in a landscaping company uh, and then partner in an electrical company. So what does a CFO do? A CFO takes that data and helps you put together a forward-looking financial roadmap so you can actually hit your goals. So we wanna know what your goals are, what, and then how can we have your business help you achieve those goals? So just like everybody else, I'm a business owner. Uh, and with my finance and business experience, my mission is help home service business owners, blue collar businesses have a growing and successful business. So like I said, I'm just like one of you guys. For the last seven years, I've been operating home service businesses, first in the landscaping world and most recently in the electrical world. I know the struggles, I know the pain and sweating payroll, being up all night stressed, never having enough money in the bank. And now I'm here to help you guys solve that problem. So. In my last company, we grew up by over 500% in less than three years. I cannot disclose the exact numbers due to non-disclosures, non-competes since I exited that business. Um, but what are we going to dive into today? We are going to dive into the 12 drivers of cash flow. So what does that actually mean? These are 12 different things that impact the amount of money you have left over at the end of the day to do whatever you want to do with. And if you're like most business owners, there is never enough. So 50% of businesses actually don't make it to their fifth birthday. I'm sure you've heard that stat. That stat is true. And the reason they don't make it to their fifth birthday is because they run out of money. If they still had money, they'd still be here. So they run out of money for a lot of different reasons. And that is what I focus on. That's what the show is going to be focused on, helping you have more money at the end of the day. So you have a financially healthy business. So your business is growing. You're achieving your goals. And the business is producing enough cash to make sure you can do everything you want to do. So the numbers will tell you everything. They don't lie. There's a lot more to your cash flow than just the bottom line. What I realize is most business owners don't even look at their balance sheet. Some of them don't even know what a balance sheet is. If they have a CFO, they never will have to, luckily, because 
if you're like most business owners, you started your business because you're really good at the trade. You're really good at the scale. You have a passion for it. Whether you're an electrician, an HVAC technician, a plumber, a landscaper, whatever it is, most businesses start by having the technician get in a truck and go do it. They re very rarely focus on the money. Most businesses run their company from a financial standpoint from their checking account and their P&L. They look at what the bottom line says, they look at how much money's in the bank, and then they say, my bookkeeper handles that, my CPA handles that. So what are we going to do today? We're gonna drive in, dive in to the 12 cash flow drivers. Those drivers are, you don't have to remember all this, but if you want to, you can listen to as many times as you want. The way I look at things is first, we gotta look at what's driving profit. That's part of the cash flow equation. Number of transactions. So how many jobs are you actually closing? What is the average ticket of those jobs? So that's number two. What is your cost of goods sold? So that way we know what your gross profit is. So those are your first, th first three drivers of profit. Number of transactions, average ticket, cost of goods sold. And then looking, quote unquote, below the line, what is the payroll in your office? What is your marketing spend? And then what is all of your other overhead? What's the rent, utilities, internet, professional services, all those things. So those six things drive profit. Those are the biggest drivers. Now, obviously everything drives profit. Every time money comes in and money goes out. But the main six drivers are number of transactions, average ticket, cost of goods sold, office payroll, marketing, and then overhead. So what I want you guys to start to realize is that first we got to get crystal clear on where we are going. So where does your profit need to be? It depends on what type of business you want to build. So when I quit my first job, I had no vision. This was in 2010. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I didn't want to work for somebody else. So I'm sure you can relate to that as well. I had no vision. I was wearing all the hats, putting out the fires, you know, bouncing around like a ping pong ball because I didn't know what success look like? What was the end goal? If we don't know where we are going, we don't know what actions we need to take today that will get us the best results because we don't know what success looks like. We haven't defined it. So when I work with anyone, we first got to get crystal clear on where we are going. So for anybody that's familiar with Raleigh, North Carolina, there is what's called the Beltline. It's 440. It's, it's a highway that literally goes all the way around the city. It's one circle. You could drive on it forever and just keep passing the same things over and over and over and never get off. It's not actually taking you anywhere. So I like to use this analogy as business owners. We get in our car every day and we work hard all day. We drive that car all day long, drive, drive, drive. We're exhausted by the end of the day. We get home, we get out of the car and we are done. But we actually haven't made it anywhere because we didn't know where we were going other than we got to keep this car running. So what we want to start to do is figure out where do we actually want to go? and everybody's destination is different. Everybody started their business for different reasons, but once we know where they wanna go, we can then get on a highway like I-40, which runs from California to North Carolina, and know if I'm in Raleigh and I wanna get somewhere out west, I'm probably gonna get on 40, but I know that I'm making progress because I'm getting closer to the destination instead of driving in circles all day. So, sorry for that little sidetrack story, but that's really where you know, I want everybody listening to this to understand is what should your profit be? Depends on what type of business you want to build, which depends on what type of goals you're trying to accomplish. So going back to those profit drivers, just so you have them kind of ingrained in your head, number of transactions, average ticket, cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is defined as, you know, your labor and materials and anything else that's required to deliver the service that you are providing. Your payroll in the office, your marketing, your overhead. Those are driving, those are the main drivers of profit. Now, where most people stop is there. Well, what we really need to keep going so we know what's really causing cash flow issues. Most businesses run into cash flow issues at some point, and a lot of times it's not related to profit. So what do we look at? We then have to look at what's going on in your balance sheet. So how, looking at our assets, how long is it taking us to get paid and how much money are we owed? So if you're not collecting money upon completion and money is sitting out there, that makes for a very stressful business. So how long is it sitting out there and how much is it sitting out there is a key driver to your cash flow. So that's the first thing on the balance sheet. The next thing is if you have inventory. So if you have paid for all of the inventory, if you have inventory, how long is that inventory sitting around? Because that's money just sitting around that you cannot use. So how is your inventory doing? 
And then the last thing with assets, are you buying or selling a lot of assets? Are you listening to the quote unquote experts that tell you you have to go buy a vehicle on December 31st so you don't have to pay as much in taxes because we can accelerate that depreciation. So what are you doing with your assets? So those are the next three things. How long does it take to get paid? How much are you owed? That's one, one item. How long is your inventory sitting around and then are you buying or selling a lot of assets? Then looking down further on the balance sheet, how much money do you owe people and how long is it taking you to pay them? So similar to being owed, do you have a bunch of lines of credit out there with your supply houses and is it taking you forever to pay them? And then what other type of debt? So the next one, this would be number 11. What other type of debt do you have? Are you adding to it? Are you paying it back? And then lastly, number 12, how much money are you the owner taking out of the business or putting into the business? If you continue to put money in the business, your cash flow might be okay, but we don't want a business that relies on cash injections from the owner either. So those are the 12 drivers of cash flow. When you have pain in your business, it is because one, two, three, four, or all 12 of these things. So want to just kind of recap that for you guys. Number of transactions, average ticket, cost of goods sold, office payroll, marketing, overhead, days sales are up, how many days your sales are outstanding, how many days your inventory is outstanding, are you buying or selling assets, how long are you paying, how long is it taking you to pay people, so days payable outstanding, that's number 10. What are you doing with debts? Are you adding to it? Are you repaying debts? That's number 11. And the last one is owner's investments and or draws, and that's number 12. So those are the key driver of your cash flow. So if you feel pain of, man, I don't know how I'm gonna make payroll this week, or man, I've gotta you know, extend my vendors even longer. Oh man, this is getting really tight. I don't know if I can make all the first of the month payments. Or you just don't have enough money in there to sleep well at night. Maybe you're making all of your payments, kind of squeaking by, but, it's a little bit uncomfortable. It's a little bit not where you want it to be. That's what's causing the pain in your business. So now that we know where we're going, we know where we're at, now it takes you to start making changes in those things. What I would encourage everybody, because when we wake up every morning, the fires just start coming. Phones ringing, emails ringing, service titans going off. All the things are happening, texts are calling you, dispatchers doing this. All the things are happening. A lot of times we never get proactive in working on our business. You guys have probably heard that a million times. So what I want everybody to do, and I encourage everybody to do this, is just pick one or two things to focus on for the next 30 days. So maybe your cost of goods sold is a lot higher than you want it to be. Don't worry about the other stuff because you can't fix all 12 things at once. Let them continue to go as they are, and let's just focus on cost of goods sold. If you think of like, I don't know, Dave Ramsey's debt snowball theory. He said, just focus on one thing until that's done so we can start to build momentum. So in this example, maybe your cost of goods sold is out of whack. You want it to be, say you want your gross profit to be 60%, so your cost of goods sold should be 40%. So that way you have a 60% gross profit. And maybe you only have a 48% gross profit. You're not going to go from 48 to 6. You're not going to go from 48 to 60 right away, but maybe we can go from 48 to 50 in the next 30 days. So pick one or two things to focus on, figure out what's causing that issue and then start putting the plan, putting the systems, putting the processes in place to start to fix that issue. Like I said, it's not going to happen overnight. But one of my favorite sayings is the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So I have yet to run into a business that didn't have something it could work on. I do run into a ton of businesses that have a lot of things to work on and they don't do anything because they don't know where to start. So I would look at if cash flow is your issue, I would look at one of those 12 drivers that is causing an issue in your business and start working on that. Make sure the other ones stay where they're at. Make sure they don't get worse. But let's focus on improving one thing over the next 30 days. So I've been there before. You've been there before. We all feel like professional firefighters at some time. Waking up every day, waiting for fires to pop up. Totally reactive mode. There was no strategy other than survival. Just got to make it through the day. Got to make it through the week. Got to make it through the month. If we just get this, if we just do that, those things never come to fruition. So many people say, if we just get to a million dollars, or if we just get to $3 million, or if we just get to $5 million, 
that doesn't solve the issue. More money doesn't solve a systemic problem. We want, we want to fix that problem now. So when we do get to $3 million, we have less problems. So it's time to go, in my another analogy, go from a firefighter to an engineer. Let's start putting plans in place so we can get to where we want to go. And it starts by just taking that first step. So kind of give you a perfect example for cost of goods sold. I was working with a plumber who was struggling with consistent, positive, predictable cash flow. So we dove in. And the first red flag was we actually didn't know if he was price right because he had all his payroll in one bucket. So this is kind of diving into cost of goods sold a little bit further. All of your payroll should not be in one bucket. You should have your field labor in your cost of goods sold because you're only paying those people when they're working in the field. So that's a big red flag if all of your payroll is in one bucket. So let's get that fixed first. Say we want a minimum gross profit, like I said, if say 60% is our goal. First, we gotta, gotta get our books set up properly. Now we do that. Now we can dive into what's causing cost of goods sold. Is it our pricing? Is our pricing not right? So actually our the direct expense of labor is okay or direct expense of material is okay. We're just not charging enough. Or maybe we are paying our guys too much. Maybe they're not on performance pay. Or maybe they have inefficient routes. Maybe you're in landscaping, their routes just aren't efficient when they're mowing, you know, when they're doing maintenance routes. Or maybe your dispatcher's not dispatching them right. Maybe they're, you know, sitting around for two or three hours every day waiting for another job to go to. So there are so many drivers of that. But once we know what the big issue is, then we can dive into it. So that's what I encourage everybody here today. Get out there, figure out what your numbers are, and just get started. If you have any questions, I do free calls every single day. It's not a sales call, I promise you. It's simply a business evaluation. There is no sales pitch, just me paying it forward, digging into your business for 30 minutes figuring out, getting really clear on where you want to go, what does success look like, and then what's getting in the way. As Warren Buffett said, learning from mistakes are great. Learning from others' mistakes are even better. So you can go do this alone, and I promise you it'll work. However, if you want to go there quicker, find other people that can help you. If it's not me, it's somebody else. But stay in your lane of what you're an expert in and find other experts and everywhere else that you need help. So 99% of business owners started their business because they're an expert at the craft, not because they love dispatching or they love doing bookkeeping or they love marketing. They do their business because they love the craft. They love the customer engagement when fixing an issue. They love the before and after, not all the other things that are required when running a business. So leave you with this. We talked about it at the beginning. Over 50% of businesses never see their fifth birthday that's simply because they ran out of money. Almost all of these are preventable if you have the f right financial guidance, right plan, right strategy, especially in the trades. There is a never ending demand. This None of these trades are going anywhere. Boomers are retiring. So I encourage all of you guys, I'll leave it one more time. Go back to the top. 12 drivers of cash flow. What's causing the cash crunch in your business? What's causing you not to be able to make payroll or stressing at night? 12 drivers, number of transactions, average ticket, cost of goods sold, office payroll, marketing, overhead. Those are your first six. Next six, day sales outstanding, days inventory outstanding, buying or selling of assets, days payable outstanding, additions or repayments to debt, and then lastly, owner's investments or draws. I promise you guys, if you start tracking all of those things, you will know exactly what's not working in your business. The key then is to remove your ego and understand that you need to fix this and stop making excuses, stop kicking the can down the road. Dive in, get to work. Your future self will thank you. Again, that's all I got today, guys. Um, if you do want to chat further on this, just go to thebluecollaradvisors.com slash call. If you can't remember that, just go to thebluecollaradvisors.com. If you can't remember that, just look me up on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Paul Maskill, M-A-S-K-I-L-L. -L. Um, but until next time, gang, make it a great rest of your day. And again, just take action. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now.